Welcome to this video on creating pages in Scribe How. So I use Scribe How to document processes really simply rather than having to create user guides from scratch. I can go I can set Scribe How to record a process that I'm doing as and when I do it and then it will create a document for me that I can just edit and then I can share it with other people. Now pages is a different part of this and pages means that you can group ton, a lot of documents together to almost create a little bit of a, a process flow to pull them all together and you can even create like a little customized curated list of processes or learnings that you might want to share with your team for onboarding. Um, things like that. So it's really, really useful to group all of those documents, all of those recordings together. Now I'm using the free version of Scribe, so you can see what you get for nothing, but obviously you'll get slightly more functions if you're using Scribe Pro. And what I'm going to do is in the top right hand corner, I'm going to go to new. I'm going to click on new. The option at the bottom is create a page. So you're creating a document with multiple guides. And I'm just going to do that right now. So I've got an untitled document. So I'm going to call this Scribe Resources. So I'm going to pull together a few Scribe pages that are already there to help other people in my team get comfortable with using Scribe. Now it does look a little bit faded on my screen. So it is showing you to press the um, forward slash for the menu. I always get forward slash and backward slash the wrong way around, but you can see it there on the screen. And you can obviously click on add a scribe as well. Now you've got to create a page with AI or you can create an empty page or you can just add a scribe. Now I'm going to add a scribe and I'm going to search for scribe just to be a little bit confusing, just because I want a few documents that have been created to pull together into my page. And I'm just going to click on the sharing one. And that's now given me a link to that document that someone else has created. These are obviously available to everyone. Now, if I had a number of processes that I've documented, I could obviously access those and pull those into it. Now that I've done that, I'm missing those options. So I'm definitely going to have to use the slash to pull up the menu. And when I do, you can see I've put the slash in there. You've got a few options here to add a text block, to give some instructions, to add a scribe, which is what I did a few moments ago, add a placeholder if that scribe hasn't been created yet, so that you can map out a process, a page, when all of the bits are not in there yet, which is quite useful when you're trying to see what's missing. Um, you can add a table of contents, which is super, super useful, because they will hyperlink out to the different scribes, rather than people having to scroll down. You can add a, a header, a subheader, lists, images and videos so you can add more than just scribes into this page to make it super interactive and have all of your information in one space so if this was an onboarding piece you might have an introduction there you might have a video welcoming the use the new person into your team and then various scribes maybe broken down by text blocks and things like that headers and subheaders in order so they understand what they need to do so let's add a table of contents there. And you can see on this page how to say your scribe with others. That's the only one that's available. And when I hover over these, you've got the rubbish bin on the right hand side. So I uh, can get rid of this because this is just a page that I'm pulling together of information and other resources. And I can always just quickly get it off this page if I want to. But these dots on the left hand side, if I click and hold on those, just means you'll see the lines pop up and I can move this lot around. It's a bit temperamental to drop it in place, but let's see if we can make it happen. There we go. And then the now my contents are right at the top, which makes a little bit more sense. So let's just do the slash again and add another scribe. And again, I'm going to search for my scribe. So if this is your, if these are your documents, just make sure you know how you've titled them. And then obviously you're going to pull them all in going to add another one and you can see as I'm pulling these in my table of contents is constantly being updated and I've got a few different options there there's a big one there and obviously if these are not in the right order I can just reorder them by clicking on that left 
So let's put capture and ascribe at the top and using that line that pops up when it does appear to just drop them in the right order. Again, if I had anything else like a header, then if I had a header bar and put a header warning, I can always move other things here and around if I need to because the header bar doesn't want to doesn't seem to want to move so what I would then do is just move all of my scribes around to make sure that that makes sense And you can see how they've flowed under there. So always do headers and subheaders and things first, just to make your life a little bit easier. If I wanted to add a bulleted list, I can put that in and I can add extra bits of details. And obviously just return if I want to get rid of that. And continue to add more scribe documents in if I want to. So just scroll down. And you can see I've got more going on there. So it's something you're going to want to play around with and have a look and see how it works best for you. You can see on the table of contents there how it's indented when I've put the header one. And obviously I can go in there and change that to be whatever I want it to be. And the table of contents will automatically update. These, like I said, are hyperlinks. So when this is shared, your users don't have to go down and click on everything. They can use a table of contents to see exactly where it is and it will just be a much nicer journey for them to play around with. So some really useful bits there. You can see the rubbish bin, like I said, on the right hand side. When it is a scribe, you can see you've got the option to scrape, change and edit scribes and you can change the sizing as well. So something to really have a go if you want to pull together loads of process documents and resources and things like that. Once you've created those scribe documents, then you're just pulling them together into one page so it's easily accessible for all of your users. Definitely one to have a go at. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and let me know what videos you'd like me to record next.